everyone. Congratulations on your new paint suit. I'm Mark. I'm here to help you get familiar with the product. Keep in mind that your product did come with a very clear and concise user's manual filled with very important information. You're going to want to consult that before you get started with your paint zoom. Speaking of which, here's the paint zoom. It includes the paint zoom spray gun, a paint container, viscosity cup. What is a viscosity cup? Well, the viscosity cup is used to measure and thin the paint. Okay? Right there, the hose. Where would you be without it? And the motor base. Putting the whole thing together is really simple. Watch this. Spray gun, container. Simply screw the paint container onto the paint gun. Attach one end of the hose to the back of the gun here, and the other end to the motor base. Plug it in, you're ready to go. Well, almost. First you have to prepare your space. When painting, you should always make sure your surface is clean and completely dust free. This will ensure you the best possible result. Although your paint zoom will produce very little overspray and paint mist, we recommend you cover any surfaces you wish to remain paint free with a drop cloth and tape off all moldings, outlets, window frames, etc. And remember, keeping yourself safe is the most important thing. When painting, you always want to wear eye protection. You could use the big goggle kind like that, especially if you already wear glasses. I like to wear the uh, smaller kind. It's really up to you. And you always want to breathe in as little paint fumes as possible. So you got your handy dandy mask right here. You always want to wear that. I'm not going to wear it right now because then you won't be able to understand what I'm saying. But when you're painting, it's crucial that you wear yours. And of course, remember that your user's manual has very important safety information. You're always going to want to look that over before you start using your paint soon. Once you've prepared your surface, it's time to prepare your paint. The first thing you have to do with your paint is test the viscosity. Viscosity just means how thick the paint is. To test the viscosity of the particular paint you're using, simply dip the viscosity measuring cup into the paint and time how long it takes for the paint to empty completely from the cup. Now if it takes longer than the time indicated in your instruction manual for that cup to empty completely, you're going to want to thin your paint. For the Paint Zoom and the Paint Zoom Deluxe, the indicated time is 50 seconds. For the Paint Zoom Platinum, the indicated time is 90 seconds. So when you're diluting, you start with a 10% dilution. That means 10% water, 90% paint. You give it a stir, you test the viscosity again, just add more water as you need to. To thin the paint, simply place your finger over the spout in the viscosity cup, fill it with water, let it drain into your mixing container, and give it a stir. Repeat this process until the paint reaches the desired viscosity. The next thing you want to do is strain the paint. Because Paint Zoom is a motorized paint sprayer, you want to make sure your paint is as particle free as possible so it doesn't clog or splatter. To strain, simply place your paint strainer over the mouth of your Paint Zoom container and then pour your thinned and measured paint through it. If you're using other materials like stain and varnish, you'll rarely need to thin, but you can also refer to the thinning chart in your user's manual for further information. You're probably going to want to do all of your paint preparation in a separate container from the one that came with your paint zoom. Something like one of these, simple bucket, something you can mark off how much paint you used, how much water you used, so you can repeat your process later. Also, if you find you need additional paint containers than the one that came with your paint zoom, you can order our three additional containers online at www.paintzoom.com. All paint is different. Different paint types need to be used for different jobs. For this reason, you should always read the paint can for instructions about that particular paint. Also, we recommend you test your paint by test spraying onto a sheet of cardboard or scrap wood. This will also give you a little practice working with the distance and flow rate of your paint before you take it to the job. When you're spraying something high up, such as the top of a wall or a ceiling, you should angle the suction tube towards the rear of the paint container. Similarly, if you're working on a lower surface, like the floor, you should angle the suction tube towards the front of the container. This will ensure you waste the least amount of paint possible. One of the things that makes Paint Zoom so spectacular is its versatility. You can do multiple different types of projects because of this spray pattern adjuster. It's got three positions. Horizontal, vertical, spot jet. Now let me show you how this works. 
For instance, setting the nozzle vertically is great for wide surfaces like walls or floors. The horizontal setting is best if used on ceilings and wood slats like you might find on fences. The spot jet setting is perfect for corners and other hard to reach areas. Here's some quick tips to help you paint like a pro. It's recommended that you always keep your paint zoom the same distance from the surface you're painting as you go along and overlap your strips to avoid dead space. We suggest 8 to 10 inches is a good distance and should give you the maximum paint width. Paint a thin coat first, wait a few minutes for it to dry, and then go over it with a thicker coat. This will result in a more smooth, even paint job. There should be very little movement in your wrist, otherwise the paint flow will be uneven. A technique most commonly used by professional painters is the crisscross technique. This just means spraying the paint in horizontal strips, then adjusting the air cap, and crossing over these strips with vertical strips. Always make sure your passes are smooth and your speed should stay constant. This will make painting even a very large wall fast and easy. Right here in the back of your paint zoom gun you got this nifty little dial. This adjusts the intensity of the paint flow from the gun. You turn it clockwise to decrease the paint flow. You turn it counterclockwise to increase the paint flow. If you're spraying closer to your surface, your paint flow needs to be lighter. And if you're farther away, you should increase the paint flow. This will give you maximum coverage. It's recommended to paint in sections about 20 inches long and avoid stopping and starting if you can. Now, as I mentioned before, you rarely need to thin varnish or stain. And what I've done now is uh, take a little bit of stain, put it into my paint zoom container. Got my handy dandy goggles right here. Always remember your eye protection. And now I'm ready to take this unfinished chair and turn it into a beautiful rustic looking piece. Here we go. Keeping your paint zoom clean is very important for a professional looking paint job. A good clean gun will ensure that paint colors don't get mixed together and that the flow is smooth and even. During a painting job, if you need to change your paint for any reason or take a break, all you need to do to clean out your gun and keep it working well is unscrew the paint container. If there's any paint left over, store it in a sealed container to preserve it so it can be reused later. Fill your paint container with warm water, attach it to the gun, and then press the trigger on your paint gun and let the water run into a bucket until it is safely paint free. When you're finished with your job, you should deep clean your paint zoom. You'll want to take the spray gun apart completely and soak each individual part in hot soapy water for water-based paints or in thinners for oil-based paints. While using your paint zoom, you may come across a few simple problems. If you're getting uneven, splattered coverage, your paint is too thick. Try thinning or straining the paint. If your coverage is too light, try to spray slower and move closer to your surface, or simply increase the paint flow. If you're running into drips and snags, increase your distance from the surface, or try thinning your paint. If you're ending up with orange peel, otherwise known as air bubbles, the surface temperature is too cold and there are air pockets in your paint. Try to reduce viscosity and paint in warmer weather. If the paint is leaking from your spray gun, the container might be loose, needs to be tightened. If you have any other problems, refer to the troubleshooting section in your user's manual. Log on to www.paintzoom.com or call customer service from the number on your screen. All right, so those are just a couple of basic tips to get you moving on to beautiful, professional-looking paint jobs with your paint zoom. Go have fun.